what's happening? Oh my goodness. All right, so in my hands, I am holding two paintings. What? But they are the same painting, only different. And the reason is because, welcome everybody. My name is Artist Nicole, check it out. Oh my goodness, do you like this version? Or do you like this version? The world will never know. <laughs> so welcome. My name is Artist Nicole, for you guys who don't know me. And as you know, I am cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Perfectly imperfect, and that's how I love it, okay? My rules are simple. I own Artful Nights, Maine, in the big old state of Maine. And you guys eat, drink at home. You have an absolutely fabulous time. Where are your comments? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, there you are. Hi, guys. Hello, Julie Alderman, Kim Dosak, Zook. How you do? Sherry Lynn Oswald, you little hot mess. Lucy Lockwood McKenzie. Well, you know what, guys? I somehow, you guys know how I am with technology. Somehow, for some reason, my phone isn't letting me broadcast. So tonight, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to broadcast from my computer. Can't figure out what's going on. You got any ideas, message them to me. Okay? But, um, yeah. And that's it. Other than that, all you guys are going to do is have an incredibly amazing time at home. How cool is that? <laughs> I know, I just got done from doing another show. Uh, so I was home like for about 10 minutes before I'm popping on for this one. So there you go. How you do? All right, so are you guys excited to paint the happy truck tonight? Because I know I am. All right, and the reason that I'm showing you a couple different versions is because I've done this painting in the real world about five, six, seven, ten. I don't even know how many times. And I, what I want to impress upon people is it is your world. Art is what makes your heart happy. There's no right, there's no wrong, okay? And you guys are gonna do this, but you're gonna do it with the truck color that you want. If you wanna put a pumpkin in, that's what I'm gonna go with tonight. But heck, maybe you want apples in the back. Who knows? Maybe you want your great grandmother hanging out in the back, okay? That's okay too. You make it your, your version of this beautiful painting. Okay, because art is what makes your heart happy. That's right, my part of people. All right, so tonight, the colors that I'm going to use for this painting are, we've got the beautiful fall orange. We got a little bit of red. We got some yellow, who's a mellow fellow. Okay, I've got a little bit of brown, some black. My truck color is going to be blue. And then we have some white. And other than that, that's all you guys are going to need. Now I'm going to go out and see those comments again. Ooh, Heather Brookline, Marie Clement Schultes. Hi, Nicole. How you doing? You make it fabulous. You make it fabulous. And Tanile Berkeley Horkscott. Hi, honey. Robin Wood. How you doing, sweet girl? Sam Collins from Texas. Chandelier Tate Barber. Oh my God, you guys. You just keep going and going. You're making my heart so happy. All right. So what we're going to do first, okay, is everybody is going to grab their big old brush. That's right. We got him. Right? We're going to call him. What are we going to call him tonight? I'm going to call him Chevy. <laughs> Because get it? We're painting the truck. Chevy. <laughs> 57 Chevy. Okay? So, every time I say grab your Chevy, you know what I'm talking about. All right? I've never had a truck. I have a Volkswagen. However, if I did have a truck, perhaps it would be a Chevy. Okay? <laughs> All right. And the first thing that we are going to do with our Chevy, okay, is, Everybody is going to double dip him. 
All right, so what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna take that Chevy, right? I noticed people laugh when I said Chevy. Maybe I should have called them Ford, all right? <laughs> and one side of that Chevy, okay, on your paint plate, what I'm gonna have you guys do is you're gonna take a little bit of black and a little bit of white, okay, just like this. And our goal is to make a light gray. But rather than have you guys mix those two colors together, I'm going to have you just poke them together or marbleize them, okay? I'm not squishing them together. I'm just going to have you marbleize them, just like that. See that? And basically what you're doing is you're tapping two colors together, okay? And on my canvas, I'm going to be using my canvas this way not this way. So I'm going to be using it the long way, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Chevy. I'm going to pull up from the top, all right, with that marbleized paint. And what you're going to see is you're going to see that that is not um, one color. Can you see how those two colors are mixing together and they're making this beautiful, uh, you know, just not a solid blend, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to pull it down just like this, and you guys are going to keep on pulling until your entire canvas is covered. However, don't worry about this bottom layer, all right? Just stop at that top, pull her down, just like this, okay? And we're just stroking up and down. Now, one thing I've talked about is I'm finding that my canvases are not as gessoed as they used to be. You know what I mean? They used to be much easier to use. So in order to combat that, what I'm doing, and you're probably finding this too, if you're buying your canvases at a local um, craft store, right? And so without them being gessoed, it's kind of hard to get that paint to cover and pull the way we want it to. So what I tell people is grab a little bit of paint water on your brush, just a little bit, and loosen up your paint, okay? And what you're going to find is that it spreads much easier if it's a little loose. Look at that. Woo, baby. Look at my sky. That's right. This is going to be happy little truck land. Can you see that? Up and down. It's not a solid color. It's more like a rain color because the colors that we really want to pop on this canvas are, are, get it? Are, are, <laughs> are, 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 um, are, are blue truck or whatever color you guys want your truck to be, and the leaves on the tree, okay? Those are the colors that we really want to pop, just like a little pop gun, all right? So here we go. Bringing that gray down, just like this, from the top to the bottom. I got a tiny bit of blue in there. I don't care if I get a tiny bit of blue in there. That's all right. My heart is still happy. All right, how have you guys been? I have missed my little art people. You know I miss you when I don't do my other lives, right? Okay, we're pulling, we're pulling. There we go. There, and my canvas is almost finished. Okay, I'm just gonna look at it real quick. Get those in-betweeny spots. And again, if you run out of that paint, just make a little more, all right? And we want this gray mixture to be relatively light, okay? We don't want it to be nice and dark. We want it to be light at the top. All right. Ooh, nice. There we go. Hey. Oh, jeez, and crow, I love it. I just really, oh, geez, I went a little dark there. That's all right. Grab a little white, pull it right over. Not a problem. 
That's the beauty of painting. You can never mess up because you can always go over it, right? You know. That's right. Okay? And you're all finished when it looks like your version of this. Okay? Can you guys see that? Ooh. Ah. Right? Ooh, I like that. The problem with this, doing it this way, is I can't see your comments unless I look for them. So, I'm going to let you guys keep working on that until you get yours done. All right, here, I'll pull a little bit more in there, a little bit more in there. Okay, now a painting is never finished until we do what, my party people? You know what. We are going to paint our top, our sides, and our bottom. However, we never paint our bottoms first because then you're going to get a sticky bottom, and nobody wants a sticky bottom. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. All right, so there's my top. Here's my sides. Perfect. All right, and then we're going to get this side. There. All right. Awesome. I love it. Okay. And now I'm going to go down and see those comments, see what's happening. Hello from me, Jennifer Harriman Script Shop. Susan Ross Meacham. Hey, honey. Oh, that's all right, girl, Louise Edwards. You know what's going to be waiting for you. Hi, Kim Dosiak. Kelly Fisher from Smith Falls, Canada. Lisa Marr. How you doing, Lisa? Melissa from Missouri. Bonnie from Springfield, Illinois. Melissa Temple. Hey, girl. Sandy from Illinois. Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for joining me tonight. God love you. And remember, okay, when this is all over, when we finish the truck, all right, immediately I take the video, I save it onto my Facebook page. That's why I tell you guys to like Artful Nights Made on Facebook so that you can immediately get the video afterward. So if I'm going a little fast, because I tend to be a little hyperactive, okay? And if I'm going a little fast, you guys, you don't have to worry about it, because you'll get the replay immediately. Then in a couple days, I throw it on my YouTube channel, and you can get it there too. I look like a deer in the headlights though, because of this computer glare. That's all right, I'm all right with that. <laughs> okay. So when you guys are all done with that part of your painting, what you're going to do next is you're going to grab your Chevy. And this time, what I am going to have you guys do is mix a little black and white together. And you are going to make a gray that is one shade light uh, darker than the top of your painting. Okay? So we are going to make a gray, and this time we're not marbleizing it, okay? This time we are actually mixing that together, and you guys, with our little chevy, and you guys are going to make a gray that's one shade darker. There we go. Look at that. Mmm, there's mine. Okay? And then what we're going to do is you guys are going to take this gray with your chevy, and you're going to put a line that goes straight across this way. Okay? Straight across this way. And this is actually going to be the road that your truck sits upon. Okay? Look at that. Ooh! The long winding road. Okay? And I might actually bring that up just a tiny bit higher. And this road is actually about, I would say, because I'm using an 11 by 16 canvas, this road is about a fourth of the way up. Okay? So a fourth of the way. This would be my halfway point, and it's about a fourth of the way up. Okay? And what I'm going to do is paint in that entire road by stroking left to right. See that? Oh, yes, y'all. 
I'm going to run on that road. You better watch out. Don't you meet me on the road with my truck because, you know, little girl, the big truck's all over. <laughs> okay? So there we go. We're stroking left to right just like that. And there we go. There is my truck road. I'm going to pull it around the corners. Right? Because, you know, you don't want that truck to get stuck. Stuck in the mud. Okay. Beautiful. Now, you guys can go a little darker on that road if you'd like to. That's always an option. Okay. You don't want to go too dark, but you can make it a little darker if you'd like. I think I might do that. I think I might make it a little darker. Okay. And that's basically all I did was add a little bit more black to it. Why? Because I don't like it. Right? Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. There we go. Cool. There. Yeah. Alright. Now, what you guys are going to do next is you're going to grab those super duper hair dryers because we are going to dry off this canvas so we can start on our truck. Alright? So here we go. Oh, we got my little Tweety Bird tonight. How you doing, Tweety? Okay. Here we go. Oh my goodness, here we go. Oh! <laughs> What I am going to have you guys do next. Now, I have done this truck freehand umpteen million times. Look at that. Oh, I'm a paint monster. Um, what I'm going to have you guys do is go grab a piece of chalk if you haven't done that already. Grab a piece of chalk. Grab a little pencil. Just grab something, okay? Something that you can write on that canvas and we can paint over so that you can get the foundation of that truck exactly the way you want it. Me, I had a nice piece of chalk, okay? And the first thing that I am going to have you guys do, all right, we've got our road, we've got our background. You are going to take your chalk or pencil, all right, and you are going to draw a line that starts probably about a third of the way, right on top of that road. Okay, just like this. Look at that. Oh, yes. And that is actually the foundation of your truck. Okay, can you see that? So I'm giving myself probably about, now I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas. Uh, 11, yeah, 11 by 14. So I'm giving myself two inches on one side, and I'm giving myself about three inches on the other side. And that line is going right across the top of my road, because believe it or not, that is where the foundation or the bottom of my truck sits. Okay? All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chunk, all right, we got to build the back of that truck. So I'm going to bring this up straight up and down. And this is going to be, eh, I'd say a good, about two inches. Okay, so here we go. We've got the back of the truck and the base of the truck. Look at that. There you go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, except for when I do this side, okay, I'm actually going to round the, the uh, front of the truck. 
So rather than have that truck square on this side, I'm going to round it out just like that. See that? And that's going to be my awesome bumper. <laughs> or bumper. Bumper? Hood. Hood. It's going to be my hood. Because <laughs> it's all good in the hood. <laughs> okay? And then what we're going to do is I'm going to have you guys connect one side to the other. All right, here we go. One side to the other. Okay, and I'm going to hold this straight so you can see, or try to hold it straight so you can see exactly what that looks like. I've got basically got a rectangle right here, and I've rounded off one side of it. Easy peasy pumpkin pie, huh? That's all. All right. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my chalk, okay, and I'm going to give it, we'll probably go in about an inch and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve my windshield. And that's what that's going to be. There's my windshield. I'm going to curve it up. So I'm going to start from there. I'm going to curve it up just like that, bring it around here, okay, with another curve, so that's not a straight line, that's a curved line, okay, we're going to go straight across, about an inch and a half, and guess what, my little party people, you guessed it, we're going to bring it straight down, just like that. Okay, there you go. What, is that the front of my truck? Yes, it is, just like that, okay? Now, the next thing that I'm gonna have you guys do with your chalk or with your pencil is you're gonna come into this backside, okay? So you're gonna start right here and about a half an inch up, you're going to bring just a little bit further. You're going to bring the bed of that truck. I think that's what it's called. Truck line of bed. Okay, look at that. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, now, before we fill this in, I'm going to have you do one more thing, and that is you guys are going to carve out some macaronis. What? Macaronis, okay? My first macaroni, or my rainbow, I'm going to go right here, all right, and it's going to come in. And basically, all you have to do is draw a rainbow, right? The top of a rainbow, just like that, okay? And what I want you guys to notice is where the, this comes out beyond the front of the truck, okay? There's my first macaroni, all right? And then we're going to do the same thing on the back of the truck, all right? But this one isn't going to come out past the bed. This little macaroni is going to start here, all right? It's going to match its little friend just like this. There we go. And there, look at that. And what these are, are your little wheel wells. What? Oh yeah, these are your little wheel wells. I'm gonna bring mine up. Whoop, broke my chalk. Oh well, it's because I'm a beast. Okay, bring that up a little higher, just like this. And like this, okay? Now notice that this wheel well goes beyond there and then this one stays within the bed of that truck. 
okay, or the trunk, or whatever that thing's called. All right, I think I might bring my trunk out a little more just because I feel like it. Then I'll bring this out a little more. All right, and then I'm gonna come in, and why do I call this the macaroni? Not because I like Kraft macaroni and cheese, let me tell ya. But because when you pull in this wheel well, she looks like a piece of macaroni. Right? Let me do it. Look at that. Okay. There's one. And here's number two. Here's my second macaroni. All right. Now, now comes the good stuff. All right, let me see what's going on with these comments. Hello from Buffalo, New York. Oh, I'm going to the bottom. Looks nice, you said. Why, thank you. <laughs> I like that. All right, now, what I'm going to have you guys do next, you have a choice. You can use your medium brush if you're more comfortable with that. If you're a beginner, grab your little brush. Okay, your little detail brush, this little guy right here. All right, so if you've been painting for a while, grab your medium brush. If not, grab your little detail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my medium brush and I'm going to squeeze it out. Okay, I'm going to squeeze it out and so it's nice and flat, just like that. Look, oh, here it comes. Oh, oh, it's talking to you. Okay, <laughs> hello. <laughs> okay. And what you guys are going to do is you're going to trace around your chalk lines, okay? Now, if you guys want to paint your truck green, like Mr. Green Jeans, you go for it. If you want to paint your truck red, go for it, okay? I am going to paint mine a light blue, all right? And here we go. I'm gonna take my light blue and I'm just gonna trace around those lines that I just made. Okay, here we go. Here's the back of my truck bed that's gonna go a little bit further. See that? Boom, bada, boom. All right. And then I'm gonna come around town, trace around my hood. You can feel good when you drink hood. There's a company in Maine, that's a milk company, we call it Hood. All right, we're gonna come underneath here. Just like that. We're gonna go above our little macaronis. Look at that. Ooh. How about a little craft macaronis? All right, see that? Boom. And then I'm gonna finish up by painting in the end of my truck. Look at that. Okay? So there we go. Look at that, everybody. Woo-hoo-wee. I'm ready to drive. I don't know about you. <laughs> Better watch out. I'm coming for you. Okay? And then we're going to do the same thing up here. Okay? We're going to paint around this uh, window or whatever the heck this is called. Bed, truck. I don't know. I'm not really good on my truck terminology. But, yes, yeah. Look at that. Mm, she ready. She ready to ride on that truck. Okay. And there. Then what I'm going to have you guys do is you are going to take your Big old brush. We're going to go back to our Ford. Now I, no, Chevy. Now I think what I'm going to do, just so I can give equal, equal things to equal people. This one's going to be a Ford truck. All right. So my medium brush, I'm going to call him Ford. All right. And then, Chevy. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to grab that Chevy. And you guys are going to paint in your entire truck bed light blue or whatever color you chose to do your truck. All right? There you go. Get her in there. I tell you what, I can remember 
seeing these old trucks in the field. I didn't like that. Up here in Maine, we got lots of these old trucks. All right. Yes. Okay, so there you go. There's that part. And we're painting in this part of the truck. Getting her nice and light blue. I like that. Look, she looks very classic. You know what I'm saying? I think I might want to restore that bad girl. Yes, I like it. I like it a lot. All right, see that? Beautiful. Okay, now, rather than have you guys paint in the entire window, all I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you just put a little bit more, okay? All I'm doing is I'm thickening the lines around that window. Look at that, okay? So all I did was thicken my lines a little bit. All right, and now what I'm gonna do I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to bring in this back uh, bed liner. Paint that in. Nice and gorgeous um, antique truck blue. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, what do I love? I like a nice truck. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. Get down in there. Okay. And you should have your whole truck painted in. Now, when I look at my truck, what I can see is I can see that I've got a little bit of that gray coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Chevy again. And I'm going to give it a second coat. Because the last thing I want to be able to do is see my background through. Before I do that, though, I'm going to dry it off. So if you guys are having this issue, dry off that truck bed, okay? Just like this. Give yourself a little squirt with a hair dryer. <laughs> okay, and you're going to go in and you're going to give that a second coat. Now, on the second coat, I always tell people, okay, whenever, especially if you're new, what tends to happen is you're a little aggressive with your brush, you know, and that's all right. That's, that's human nature. Okay, so whenever you put this brush on the canvas, you want to gently kiss that canvas, okay? Gently kiss it. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of that blue on my Chevy brush, and I am just going to bring in a second coat. And nice, gentle touches, just like this. Ooh, light and gentle. Okay. There we go. It's amazing what the second coat can do. It's like a superstar. It comes in. It's like an Avenger. Right? I say that because I watched an Avenger movie this morning. Just like an Avenger. It comes right in there. Takes care of business. You know what I'm saying? There we go. Okay? So there's my second coat on my truck bed. And now I'm going to go up and I'm going to do the window. Okay, grab a little more blue there and bring it around the window. Look at that. And the beauty is of using that truck, you guys, is if you don't like the shape of your truck, what you can do is you can take a little wet paper towel, wipe off that chalk, and redesign your truck again. Okay, maybe you want your hood a little longer. Maybe you want it to have an extend cap. You can do that. That's the beauty of using chalk, is you can go over it, you can fix it, you can do whatever you need to do. That's the beauty of it, okay? And then you want to trace over those lines. 
Alright. I am. Now that my truck is beautiful and antique blue, and I'm loving what I see, what I'm going to do next is I am going to grab my itty bitty brush. All right. What are we going to call him? Jeez, I don't know. Maybe we'll call him a Hummer. <laughs> That's a truck, right? <laughs> and everybody loves a Hummer, okay? So I'm going to have you grab this little teeny brush, dip it in your water, your little detail brush, your little Hummer, okay? And what you're going to do with that little Hummer is you're going to dip it in the white, okay? Dip it in the white. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside our macaronis, inside our wheel wells, and we're going to make our wheels, okay? Now, when we make our wheels, oh, notoriously when you're trying to do a perfect circle, it kind of grows because <laughs> nobody does it right the first time. So start off with a small wheel, and then if you need to, make it bigger. Just don't start off with a big wheel because, unfortunately, you can't make it smaller. Okay, so here I go. And for me, what is really important is that this wheel, I'm actually going to look at this instead of have it facing you because I can never make circles when I'm facing the opposite way. So there we go. There's my first circle. Okay, there's my first wheel. And what you want to do is make sure that your wheels match your truck. Okay, so if you have a larger truck, you're going to have bigger wheels. If you have a smaller truck, you're going to have smaller wheels. Okay, so um, always um, keep them in perspective, like the same, same, you know what I'm saying. Goodness gracious, I'm trying to paint a wheel and talk to you at the same time. Scary Mary, dearie. All right, and you want to make sure that each of those wheels are the same. Otherwise, your truck is going to go down the road and go, go, eh, eh, eh. nobody wants that on their truck, do they? No, sir. Okay, so make sure that you have the same size wheels. That's pretty important. Another thing I learned this week, it's pretty important to make sure you have oil in your car. Okay. <laughs> but that's another story. Huh, Sherry Oswald, my hot mess. <laughs> you would love that story. Okay, here we go. So there we go. I got those matching little donuts on the bottom. Happy days, happy days. Perfect. Okay, can you guys see that? Now you're asking, Nicole, why do we do the macaronis around our wheels? Good question. Because you need to know where those wheels need to fall on your truck. And sometimes it's hard to tell unless you have the um, wheel wells in place. But as you can see, my wheels are bigger than my macaronis. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to grab my beautiful Chevy brush. Right, my big old brush, or you can grab your uh, medium brush, you can grab your um, Ford if that's feeling like it's going to be easier for you to use. Okay, I'm loading it up with white, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint these wheels in a circular motion. Anytime you paint a sphere, okay. You want to paint it in a circular motion. All right. There's one wheel. Look at that. Happy days. And we're going to have to give these wheels two coats too, so don't feel bad. All right. Don't feel like you got to load it up. All right. Always, whenever you guys are painting something in, all right, never put a really, really thick coat on no matter what, because you can always come in 
and give something a second coat. And if you put a really thick coat on, what tends to happen, sometimes the paint will come off. Sometimes it's going to take longer to dry, and you know, so don't do it. Just put a light, thin coat on, dry it off, and then add a second coat. And magic will happen, I promise. I promise you. <laughs> okay, now, now that I've got my first coat on, what I am going to do is I'm going to grab my Hummer again. Hello, Hummer. How you do? All right. I'm going to thin him out just like this. And I am going to make a lighter version of my truck color. Okay. So if you have a green truck, what you're going to do is take green and mix it with a little white. I have a blue truck, so I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix it with my blue and make my blue one shade lighter. Okay, one shade lighter than my truck color. Here we go. A nice baby blue for those, for those wheel wells. Look at that. Woohoo! Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my little Hummer and I'm going to design those wheel wells around, say that 10 times fast, design my wheel wells around my wheels, okay? So here we go, I'm loading up my Hummer and here we go. I'm just going to carve out the wheel wells and I'm going to go right over, let me show you what this looks like. Trace right over those wheels. All right, hold on one second. And boom. Okay. And boom. Boom, chakalaka. All right, can you guys see that? So basically, my wheel well is going right over. I'm tracing around the top of that wheel with that light blue. Yeah. Oh, very pretty. I like this baby blue. Okay. And what I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So here we go. Here comes my second one. Okay. And again, you guys, I apologize for the picture quality tonight. For some reason, Facebook did a new update and it, and it has a new experience. And... I don't know why, but it's not recognizing me on my, so I can't broadcast from my phone, but my, I'm going to ask my technically savvy son, and he's going to tell me how to do that again. But for now, I have to rely on my computer, and the camera quality is not as good, let me tell you. All right? So here we go. There's one, and I'm painting my wheel well on this side as well. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Oh, I know it. I know it. She's looking good. And there you go. And it's important that these wheel well mat these wheel wells match as well as the wheels, okay? So you want these to be the same size and the same shape. Okay? Look at that. Ooh, baby. I'm about ready to take this truck for a ride. Better watch out. I'm going to go get some pumpkins. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going for a ride in my truck. <laughs> I can't see your comments, so I got to talk to myself. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that light blue and I'm going to paint in those wheel wells. All right, get them right in there. Whoa, jeez, that looks good, doesn't it? I know it does. Okay, I know you guys want to ride in my truck, don't you? <laughs> 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 okay, here we go. Here's number two. Yes, yeah. All right, look at that. Boom. Oh, she's looking good. 
right? It's a nice little macaroni right there. Okay? Now, I'm noticing this guy over here is a little low. I got a low rider. So, what I can do, if that's happening to you, I always like to make mistakes so that I can teach you guys how to fix them. We'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to dry these off, to dry off my wheel well and my wheel. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to that gray, right, because I got a low rider right here, and I don't want that right there. See this guy? Oh, geez, he's scraping. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of that gray that I made originally for the road, and here we go. Just going to take that, and I'm just going to go over this and shape this wheel well the way that I want it. Look at that. See, that is the beauty of painting, is that you can always go over it, okay? Maybe I want that wheel well to be a little thinner. That's okay, too. Look at that. Boom. See? I love it. Yes. All right. Grab a little bit more white to that gray. I want it to match just a little bit better. Okay. And I'm just shaping up that wheel well so it's looking the way I want to. And I'm going to do the same to the front. Shape her up so it looks the way I want to. All right. I don't want my truck hanging low. Jeez, it's going to hit the squirrels on there. Oh, and they go around underneath it. <laughs> Can't have that happening. Okay. And there we go. Look at that. Fixed her right up. All right. Now, the last thing that you guys are going to do before halftime, okay, is everybody is going to grab their little Chevy, that big old brush. Okay. Grab that big old brush, and we're going to put a second coat on our wheels. All right. Let's give those wheels a nice second coat. So here we go. Remember, we're going in a round motion. And if your wheel got overtaken by the wheel well, you can bring it back. Okay? See how this one got a little bit of that wheel well over it? That's all right. Because guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring it back. Beautiful. Look at that. I know. Oh, no, you guys are loving it. This is an adorable painting, let me tell you. She is mighty cute. And then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to give her the second coat, just like this. There. All right. So there you go, my guys. We have successfully made it to halftime. Woo! Okay, you guys can go make your bladder gladder. I'm giving you a four minute intermission. You can go make your bladder gladder if you need to. Grab another Scooby snack, grab another glass of wine, grab two glasses of wine. It'll make your painting come out better. Okay, and I will see you guys in four minutes. All right, see you in a bit. I'm grabbing my Tweety.
okay. I said four minutes, but I actually fibbed. I'm coming back a little sooner. But that's okay, because I got to give you my halftime speech. Okay? So, you guys, what? You are good. If you're joining me for the first time, thank you. I'm so glad to meet you guys. Um, again, I say like Artful Nights Maine, because afterward, this video, it's an, actually a free video, okay? So what's going to happen is it's going to go directly on my page. So if you need to catch up or you need to rewind, all that, don't frustrate yourself trying to keep up with me because I am as hyperactive as they come, okay? So, oh, look at all these comments. Try closing out comment. The live stream itself is working fine. Hello from South Mississippi. You love the truck. Hi, Sherry Go. I'm so glad, honey. Um, you're waiting for the tree. You're horrible at trees, says Becky Howe. Don't you worry, honey. Guess what? You are going to be fine. Hello, Sheila Wardle from Manitoba, Canada. Can you replay this video? Absolutely. Yes, honey, you can. Um, hi, April Duco. You painted with me in August at Bath Brew Works. All right, girl. Well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you joined me tonight. So, um, at halftime, what I tell you guys is, um, the most important thing to me is because I can't see you. You know what I mean? And, um, I'm still going to, I know last time during my show, I said I was just going to do the paid Facebook lives, but then you talk me into it. You know how I am. I'm a softie. So at the, the second week of every month, I'm going to be doing a free Facebook live. And, uh, the other three will be the actual events that I'm doing in the real world. So you guys are going to get my greatest, latest stuff. And our next Facebook live is going to be not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Let me show you what it is. We are going to be doing this gorgeous pumpkin welcome sign. Okay. Now this pumpkin welcome sign I do in the real world. I do it on wood. I actually, this was the class that I taught before I saw you guys today. So I do this on wood. Um, so if you'd like, this is like a 30 inch piece of wood. If you would like, right, one inch piece of wood, pine, right? You can get a 30 inch piece of wood, 30 by 10, 30 by 10 inches, or you can get an extra long canvas, or you can use whatever size canvas you want because any painting I do can be converted, okay? Basically, what we would do is you would turn your canvas the other way, and you could do it lengthwise, okay? So this is coming up in two Tuesdays. All my live shows are posted, and what I'm going to be teaching it on, I think I'm going to be teaching it on a long canvas. I don't know the exact size, but that's what I'll teach it on, and you guys can use whatever material you want for this one, and it's fun, and it's beautiful, and it's going to teach you how to do those elusive pumpkins, which are so tricky for folks. Um, so that's coming up. And, you guys, the most important thing to me is I can't see you in person. I started doing these shows during COVID uh, just to give people a little joy. But I can't see you in person. I still do my live shows in person and because I love people. You know, so if you could, please send me a picture of your finished truck. I love seeing your artwork because I can't see you. Okay, so if you could send that, message that to me through my Artful Nights main page. Or what you can do is you can join my Artful Nights main group. When you're on my Facebook page, you hit the group button. And what that is, is a group I created so that you could share your artwork. And then everybody could see everybody else's. And then I can go on there and see all yours. Because I like and I see it. I get to see every single one of them. I'm very active on that page because I love you. Okay? So join the group. Join the page. Um, my next free Facebook Live is a month from today where we're doing this beautiful fall wreath and um and yeah there you go that's my halftime speech <laughs> i'm a talker all right so
So, are you guys ready? I bet you are. You made your bladder gladder. You're ready to go. Let's do it. Okay. So, first thing that we are going to do on this truck, okay, we've got all of this done. All right, we got most of this done, but what I want you to do now for this one, what I'm gonna do, and you guys that are afraid of trees, don't you worry about it. I've been teaching trees to the best of them. I got you tonight, okay? But what I'm gonna have you guys do is we're gonna start that pumpkin, all right, in the back, because it's gonna take a couple of layers to get that done. So, and again, as I said, in the past, I have also painted this with a truck full of apples. So if you would like to do that, it's very easy. All you do is you make little circles, paint them in red, put the little stems on, okay? So that's also an option. But tonight, I am going to paint it with the pumpkin inside, okay? And here we go. For that pumpkin. What I'm going to have you guys do is everybody's going to grab their hummer. Hummer? Yes. Grab your hummer. Your little itty bitty brush. Okay? And right in the center of this truck bed, what we're going to do is I'm going to have you guys dip your paintbrush in red. Okay? In red. So I've got my hummer and I've dipped them in red. And what I'm going to have you guys do very carefully, you are going to carve out the center piece of that pumpkin in red. Okay? And there you go. What it looks like is, it looks like, and this is so funny because you guys are my second pumpkin group today, it looks kind of like a feather. Okay? Can you guys see that? And the biggest thing you guys want to remember, okay, and this is what I told my class earlier, what you want to avoid is a basketball pumpkin. And what happens is when folks try to do pumpkins too perfect, it turns into a basketball. Because pumpkins aren't perfect. They're bumpy and lumpy and they've got different sections, okay? But start out with this piece, all right? And then what we're going to do is I'm going to start right around here, okay? I'm not starting at the tip. I'm going to start right around here, okay? So I'm going to put a little line like that. And then I'm going to bring it around town just like this. All right, look at that. Oh, nice. Okay? Can you see that? I went up a little bit. And then I brought it around. This is a big old pumpkin. See, this is Farmer Ed's award-winning pumpkin because it fits in the whole back of his truck bed. Right? He's bottoming out in his antique truck trying to drive to the van. <laughs> uh oh, Farmer Joe. Better have good shots on there. <laughs> okay, there's my first side. Now, what I do on one side, I have to do to the other. So here we go. Here's the other side. And look, it does it line up? No, it doesn't because I want my pumpkin perfectly imperfect. Okay, see that? Yeah. There we go. All right. Fisher. All right, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come up right here in the center. Let's bring another little section into this pumpkin. Look at that side. Yeah, there we go. That looks good, doesn't it? Oh, yes, yes it does. Okay, there's another section. And then finally, I'm going to bring out my last section, just like this. Whoop. There. Okay. Just like that. Okay. 
bringing it in. Now, can you see how my pumpkin is not perfect? It's a little messy. That's how I like my pumpkins. Okay. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here right about there. And I'm going to add some of this. Another little section right there. Can you guys see that? Oh, that pumpkin. Yes, I do. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Here we go. There. All right, and that is Farmer Joe's big old pumpkin. Now, what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm going to change this because I'm looking mighty. There we go. Let's see if I can change it to blue. Then, I, you, then you can see me in Smurf vision. How do you like that? Oh, y'all. That's fun. Okay, let's see here. No, oh, wrong thing. All right. And, no, oh, wrong thing. Well, maybe that'll work. Okay. <laughs> I like that. All right. So there we go. Beautiful. Now I've got my pumpkin carved out. And it's only half a pumpkin because it is... Half of it is in the truck. All right. Now, what I'm going to have you guys do next is everybody is going to grab their medium brush. Okay? Grab your little Ford. All right? Squeeze it out. And rather than have you paint that pumpkin orange, I'm going to have you paint it white for now. Okay? Because sometimes the commercial oranges don't offer this fantastic coverage. So here we go, just like you designed it, okay? Here's the first section of your pumpkin. And you're going to leave that red line, okay? Leave that red line because you want to know where each section of your pumpkin starts and stops, okay? So there's my first section. Now, if you feel more comfortable using your little brush, your little hummer, go for it, okay? Here's my second section, and I'm going to paint it just like I made it. And every section is going to be separate, okay? Here's number two. Here's number three. There we go. My third pumpkin section. See that? Beautiful. There's that. Okay. Gonna come in and do number four. And I think I might grab my little brush for number four. It's starting to get a little small. So here we go. Here's my little brush. And I'm just taking that white in there. moving it around and when you paint in this pumpkin you want to make sure you're painting it in like the grains of the pumpkin you know what I mean you know how a pumpkin comes out of the earth well we're going to take our brush and make sure that we're painting it in that direction okay we're not going to go sideways or anything else we're just going in this nice up and down round motion stroking out Mr. Pumpkin look at that is that okay? And then I'm just gonna go and do the last two sections, just like this. Those little guys in the back. Okay. Yeah. How you like that? That's a mighty nice pumping, and you've got the uh, Mr. Mr. Farmer. <laughs> Nothing I like better than a nice big pumpkin. Okay. And when you are all done painting in that pumpkin white, what we're going to do is we are going to clean off our little hummer, okay? Clean it right off. And you guys are going to take that little brush. You're going to put more white on your brush. And you're going to trace the inside of your paint truck window. Okay, see that? Boom. Just like that. You're going to paint the inside of that 
trace the inside of that truck window so that we can paint the inside of that window white. All right. There you go. Just like that. And now I'm going to grab my medium brush. All right. And I'm going to paint in my window. Just up and down, okay? Keeping that right there. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice window you got there, Missy. Okay? There we go. All right. Good job. Okay. There. And... Other thing I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to take your little hummer, okay, because we have to put in some hubcaps on those wheels, all right? So what we're going to do is you guys are going to grab that little paintbrush, okay, and I'm going to show you what those hubcaps look like, all right? And they're just small circles on the inside of that wheel. Okay, again, always start small because you can always make them bigger, but you can never make them smaller. So start off with small hubcaps. Okay, here we go. And get them as close to the center as you can. Okay, otherwise your tie is going to be a little... Fruit Loopy, we don't want that. There's my first hubcap. All right, now I'm going in for number two. Here's number two. Ooh, wee. I like that. I like me some nice hubcaps. All right, okay. Here's number two. Now, I'm going to grab my medium brush, grab a little black, and here we go. Beautiful thing about black is it covers everything. You know what I'm saying? You never have to worry about two coats when you're using black. I'm just going in a circular motion and painting in me hubcap. Here's number one. Ooh, very nice. Ooh, looks like an eyeball. Ooh, I see you. I see you. Okay. <laughs> and here's number two. <laughs> Ooh, these look like, uh, I don't know, you guys remember Bert and Ernie? They look like Bert's eyeballs. Ooh. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> His little buddy. Okay. Now, what I am going to have you guys do next is you're going to take a nice deep breath because let me tell you what, I'm going to walk you through that tree. You got this. I believe in you. Okay? Easy peasy. You can do this. All right. Now, what I am going to have you guys do is everybody is going to take their medium brush. All right, and this is a relatively easy tree. Don't worry about it being all, don't even be nervous about it. Okay? Don't you do it. No, sir. What I'm going to have you guys do is grab that medium brush. You're going to load it up with black. Okay? Just black. And the good thing about this tree is it sits right on top of the road. So you don't have to worry about roots or anything. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to have you guys put just a black line. That's where you know that your trunk is going to stop. Okay, see that? That's where my trunk stops. Okay? Beautiful. And what you guys are going to do next is you're going to take your brush, turn it this way. Okay, so we're going to use it sideways. And you're going to go just like this. 
Wiggy, 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 wiggy. Right to the top. I know some of you are like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. I believe in you. You can do this. It's just a line. Okay? Just a line. Look at that. All right? It's not a tree. It's a line, babies. Okay? And what I'm going to have you do at the top is let's just go boop. Okay? Just flatten that out a little. Awesome. Now you're going to go three quarters of the way up. All right. And watch this. You're going to come down and you're going to meet one side of your black line. See that? Nice. And then you're going to start at this other side of your black line and go up there. So there, all we're doing is we're thickening up that trunk. Look at that. Boom. Okay, and now you're going to fill it in. Just like that. Easy peasy. And this trunk, okay, that's, that's the foundation of your tree. Always. You got your trunk, just like you got your body. Well, now we've got to give those trunk, you got to give it some arms, okay? So what I'm going to have you do is take that medium brush, squeeze it out, or you can use your little brush for this. No worries, guys. You do whatever you need to do, okay? Here's my medium brush. I'm going to be using it like this, really squishy. And I'm going to come in. And I'm going to give that tree some arms. Look at that. Here's my first arm. Ready? Here we go. Just like that. Okay? Now, if I left the arm just like that, it would look a little wacky, wouldn't it? Yes, yes it would. Because it's not really a part of that tree. So to make, that, uh, to make that arm a part of the tree, what I do is I start three quarters of the way and then boom, I attach that arm to the tree. Do you see what I just did? So all I did was I started three quarters of the way up, brought that arm down and attached it to the trunk of the tree. Do you see that? Now it's part of the tree. All right, let's do that again. Let's give this tree another arm. Okay, and this time, I think I'm going to give him an arm right over here. Ooh, right? Now, is that arm a part of the tree? No, no, it isn't. So what I do is I take my brush. I start three quarters of the way up, just like this. I bring it down and boom, attach it to the tree. Do you see what I'm saying? So, just like your arms are attached to your body, okay? It would look weird if you just had a little stick sticking out. You want to make sure that you attach that to the tree, okay? So, there's my second arm. All right. Now, let's bring in another arm. Why? Because we feel like it. Here we go. Here's my other arm. Just like that. Make that noise. It'll come out better. Okay. Attach that arm to the tree. Ooh, there we go. All right. Going to add another arm over here. Look at that. Oh, yeah. See that? Is she attached to the tree? No, she isn't. So let's do that. We're going to attach her to the tree. Boom, just like this. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fork this arm. Yes, I'm going to fork it. Why? Because I feel like it. Here we go. Ready? Oh, I fork you. See that? Look at that. That was easy, right? Let's fork this arm. Here we go. Oh, look at that. You forked her other arm, okay? 
And you guys can fork this one up here too, if you feel like it. All right, it's all about the tree. Maybe you want to fork the top of your tree. Let's fork that. There you go. Look. Nice, right? I know. You're making a tree. Okay. Now, I have my trunk. I have my arms. And what do I need? I need my phalanges, my fingers, my tree fingers. Okay, and this is where your tree gets interesting. So you guys are going to grab your hummer, dip it in your paint water, squeeze out that hummer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So you have a nice fine point, okay? Here we go. I got a nice fine point on my hummer. And I'm going to add my tree fingers. Now let me show you how that's done. Okay, you're going to grab some black. And you can add as many or as few of those tree fingers as makes your heart happy. Okay, so watch this. There's one. Okay, and maybe I want to fork my tree fingers. Okay, look at that. Boom. See that? These are the fingers. These are the hands of your tree. Okay, maybe I want to add some down here. That's okay. Boom. You can add as many or as few of those tree fingers as makes you happy, okay? And remember that every tree that you make, all of the tree fingers are reaching towards the sky like this. None of them go like this. They're all reaching towards the sky because they're trying to get that chlorophyll from the sun to make their leaves grow, okay? So you guys are going to reach that tree toward each one of these fingers is going to be reaching towards the sky. Look at that. See that? Yes. Beautiful, you guys. Beautiful. You can do this. Now I'm going to add some fingers off this part of my tree. Okay, let's add some over here. I'm going to extend that arm out so it looks a little bit neater. Okay, I'm going to add some fingers up here. And maybe you want to add some fingers off here. That's okay. All right, they don't always have to come from the, uh, the arms. They can come from wherever because really that's how trees work, especially an apple tree. You guys know all those suckers that come off? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Those little tree suckers. And this is what you guys are going to do. You're going to add as many or as few of those little tree fingers as makes your heart happy. Okay? I can take a tree finger, right? This is my tree fingers right here. And I can branch it off and I can split it down even further. Okay? And again, that's, that is how trees work. I'm going to add another little branch right here because it looks like I got a bald spot on my tree and I don't want that. All right, there's that guy. Hello. Now, you guys, even though I can't see your comments because they're below my screen, the cool part is, is that I go afterward and I read everything that everybody has to say. So, um, please, write me something nice. I need something cool. All right? I read them all and I answer you back. I don't know if you get the response, but there we go. I like to talk to my people. Okay? <laughs> all right. And here we go. We're going to add more tree fingers. You're going to add as many or as few as you feel like. Again, it's your world, nobody else's, and don't let anybody tell you how to live your, your tree, all right? And you can even, and this is important, I feel like people are afraid to crisscross applesauce. That's all right, you know, it's okay to cross those branches. Look at this, watch this, I'm going to make one off this guy, boom, right? Cross the other one. Why? Because that's what happens in the real world, isn't it? All those branches cross each other. All right, there, look at that. Well, oh, they don't do that though. <laughs> okay, and there you go, guys. There is the foundation of that tree, and guess what? 
I know you guys at home are nailing it. And if you need to take more time, no worries. As soon as the video is over, you can rewind. It'll be on my Facebook page, okay? So don't try to rush your tree. All right, take your time. All right, there you go. Look at that. Oh, looking good, isn't it? I know it is. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to grab your medium brush. All right? Grab that little, uh, grab that Ford, grab that Chevy Ford, I don't know, grab your medium brush. Okay? I can never remember why I name them, so I don't know why I do it, but I kind of like it. <laughs> okay. And what you guys are going to do next is you are going to make a gray that is darker, one shade darker than your road, okay? So you're going to make a gray that is one shade darker than your road, okay? So here you go. Here's mine. Can you see that right here? It's that nice charcoal gray. And I'm going to load up my medium brush, and we're going to come underneath this truck and underneath this tree because what we're going to do is we're going to add a little shadow. Let me show you. Well, I don't have to show you. I'll just teach you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take this gray, all right, and I'm just going to come underneath this tree and just pull it in because it's casting a little shadow. Look at that. Boom. See that? All right, don't worry about making it perfect or anything else. You're just going to bring in some darkness that shows that there's a little shadow being cast by that tree. Okay? Then I'm going to come in underneath this tire. Boom, boom, boom. Add a little shadow under there. See that? Come underneath the bed of that truck, right? Add a little shadow under there. And all I'm doing is just gently sweeping my brush back and forth with a little darker gray. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, see that? Yeah. All right. Maybe I want to put a little more over there. Make it a little evener. All right. And then I'm going to grab a little gray, and I'm going to put a little shadow behind here, behind the back of my truck. Look at that. Pull it right in there. Now I can see where mine is looking grainy. Like I said, that, that little gesso is not working so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, okay, my medium brush, dip it in the water, all right, just wet it a little bit. And then just gently pull that from side to side. See that? Gently pull it from side to side. And that will clean up some of that graininess made by the brush. You do not want to get it too wet, though, because that's when you get the dripsies. Nobody likes the dripsies. All right. There we go. Do, do, do. And just pull. There. Look at that. You don't even have to think that much. Look at that. Okay? And there's the shadow underneath your truck and the shadow of your tree. Okay? Now. Beautiful. All right. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit more lightness about here. Just because I feel like it. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you guys are going to do next is we're going to come in and we are going to paint in the orange on our pumpkin. What? Yes, we are because it's going to be an orange. Unless you want to leave it white. That's okay. You can leave your pumpkin white too. But I'm going to have you clean off your medium brush. Okay. Wipe it off, and here we go. Here comes Mr. Pumpkin. And what we're going to do, you guys, is yes, we are going to paint in each section the way we did when that pumpkin was wiped. Okay? So here we go. 
section is my first section. And because we did that beautiful white undercoat, look at that! Yay! Oh my goodness, I'm a so Nicole. That's bright orange. I love it. Okay. There we go. Here comes section number two. And if you guys feel like you want to do this with your small brush, use your small brush. This is there's no prize for using your big brush. But the biggest, most important thing when you're painting in your pumpkins is you want to make sure that you can still see, well, here we go, you can still see the lines in between. Okay? That's important. All right. Here comes this section. I'm going to paint that section in. Boom, bada, boom, bada, boom. There's that. And we're going to come in. I'm going to grab my little brush. We're going to paint in this section over here. Whoop. And she is a nice facet orange. Look at that. Oh, she's a pumpkin. That's all right. I love it. See that? Yes, yeah. Nothing like a nice facet orange. Okay. All right, and will we be going, well, actually, I don't know that you're asking that question, but I'm assuming you are. You're like, Nicole, we're going to be going over those red lines. Yes, we are, a little bit later. Okay, we're going to pull in that orange there, and we're going to pull in that orange there. There we go. See that? Beautiful. You did it. Okay, now for now, we're going to let our pumpkin be. We're going to let our pumpkin sit and dry, and then we're going to finish it up, okay? So for now, we're just going to let it be. And what I am going to have you guys do next is everybody's going to take their little brush, okay? You're going to take your little squeaker. You're going to wash it off. Dry it off so you don't get the dripsies. Okay, there you go, just like that. Now I'm gonna go down, look at your comment, say hi to you. Hello from Arlington, Oregon, first time visiting. Hi honey, hi Jenny Curtis. Hello from Minnesota, hello Sandy Marger. Kev Kevin Fenwick from Springfield, Ohio, awesome. Jeannie Pistol, Shaman Rashad, hi honey. First timer Stephanie Ringa, hi girl. From Tennessee, Norma Smoley, Lori Sanders. Oh, I can't wait for our class, Lori, I love you. Uh, Doralee Short Jackson from Farmville, Virginia. Oh, cool. <laughs> awesome, you guys. You don't even know. I wish I could see the comments and talk to you as I was painting. All right. Now, next thing that we're going to do, okay, we're going to bring in the outlines of our truck. This is going to pull this entire truck together, okay? So, the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is take your little brush, okay? And when I, when we do, when I bring in detail work, what I find works best, right, for these fine detail lines is if, I add a couple drops of paint water to my um, black. Why do I do that? I loosen my black up, and so it's the consistency of milk, not too much paint water, because you guys definitely don't want it to drip, all right? But I find that if I loosen up my black just a little bit, it makes it flow so that I don't have to keep going over those lines, okay? Now I'm going to grab my hummer, squeeze him out just like that. Look at that. Ooh, nice fine point. Grab some of that loose black right on the tip. And here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to bring in a nice fine black line around that window. Okay? Go. 
just like that. See that? Oh, what a nice black line you have there. Why, thank you. Okay, bring her in just like this. All right. And there. Now, in order to get a nice, I saw a lot of first timers on there. In order to get a nice thin line, okay, you guys have got to use a very light touch. All right. And if you can see this, and if I can ever teach, nobody ever listens to me because it's not comfortable for a lot of people. But whenever I use my little tiny detail brush, I always brace it with my pinky. Right, see that? That's what I tell folks. When you use your dinky, use your pinky. Because if you can learn to do that, you will have complete control over that little brush. Okay, so that's my first detail line right here. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my, uh, what do you call this thing? It's a um, door. My truck door. <laughs> Oops. All right. Here we go. And how I do that is I take and I make a line halfway to where that, uh, just a little past the window, okay? So it goes halfway across the window, a little bit behind, just like that. All right. And then I'll bring it downtown like this. And I will show you what that looks like. See, just like that. And then I'm going to bring it across this way. Okay. And I don't bring it all the way down to the bottom because it's not a, uh, I don't know what that other truck, well, oh, never mind. I'm just talking to myself now. Okay. Here we go. And, all right, see that? It's not a DeLorean. No, sir. Okay? <laughs> you guys remember that? Back to the future. Okay. So there's that. And then I'm just going to bring in a little truck handle. All right? Because I guess it helps if you can get in. And all that is is a tiny little rectangle below that door. All right, then I'm going to just put it right there. See that? Ooh, that's good, isn't it? I know. I got a nice door. Now I can get in my truck. Vroom, vroom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the, uh, what do you call this thing? The, the back end of the truck. The, um, I don't know, truck trunk. Okay, and I put a line there right across the back, all right, and then I'll bring it down across the cab, and then I'm going to bring it this way, all right, cool, whoops, there, so that's my truck uh, liner or whatever that thing is called, I can't remember what that thing is called, truck bed liner. On my antique truck. Yeah, let me show you what it looks like when it's all finished. There we go. See the bed. Okay, there's that. There's that piece. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that blue, paint it in on the end. Okay. There. There we go. Nice. Okay. And now, I'm going to clean off my brush because I have blue on it, grab a little bit of that loose black, and I'm going to bring it down, right down the bottom, just like this. Mm -hmm. Boom. We're going to outline the trunk or the truck bed or whatever it is. Okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. And then what I'm going to have you guys do is you are going to create a bumper. All right. And we're going to create a bumper by making a rectangle 
that lines up with the back of that truck bed. And I'll show you what that looks like. Hold on one second. It starts at the wheel well. Okay. And it goes like this. Can you see that? That is your bumper. And you're going to come into that bumper. Bumper, bumper guys. And you're going to paint the entire thing black. All right. And again, the bumper lines up with this truck um, bed thing. Okay. As you guys can tell, I am a truck expert. <laughs> Been a long day. I've been teaching since two. All right, there we go. Sometimes I forget my words, especially when I'm talking to myself. Usually my peeps help me out by uh, filling in the blanks. All right, there we go. Look at that. Here's my bumper. Looks good. Now it can take a nice hit. Huh, just in case one of those cows get loose and decide it wants to run into your bumper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that really happens or not, but I'm guessing it might. <laughs> oh, I'm funny. Okay. Now, what I'm going to have you guys do next, okay, is we are going to trace around those macaronis. All right. So here we go. We're going to go all the way around the outside of those macaronis, okay? Just like this. Your, um, yeah, those. All right, there's that. And there's that, okay? Beautiful. We got one macaroni. And now we're going to do two macaronis. There we go. And just like that. Okay. Here's the outside of that wheel well. And then I'm going to have you guys go underneath the, um, the body of the truck. Okay. So just another line underneath there. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? I know it is. I know it is. You like this old-fashioned truck. All right. Now, the last thing that we have to outline is we've got to outline each tire. Okay? So here's my first one. All right. And again, take your time with this. I have been painting for a long time. I paint my sleep. So I tend to do things a little quick, but take your time on this, okay? There's no prize for finishing first, that's for sure. Okay, so there's number one. And we're gonna come in and do number two. There, look at that. Boom. There you go, you guys. Now, I always like to come in, okay, and I always like to add one more feature on this truck. I like to bring in a little headlight, okay, and how I do that is I take a little black, bring it right around that corner, just like that, okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Now, be careful that the black and white don't mix, all right? Don't do that. You don't want that to happen. There. I always like a nice headlight. I think that's just a nice little touch. Okay, look at that. Oh, beep, beep. <laughs> okay. Nice little Ruger horn. Beep, beep. All right, so I always bring a little headlight in there just because, just because I feel like it. All right, now the last thing that you're going to do on your truck, okay, is you're going to take your 
paintbrush, whatever that is. And you're going to flip it around. So this time that we're not using the brush end, we're actually using the end of the paintbrush. Okay, and you're going to dip it in white, just like this. So again, not the brush end, but the other end, okay? You're going to come in right into the center of that tire. And look, there you go. Got a nice little dot, all right? Now Bert has a twinkle in his eye. All right, there's one, and then two. Okay, look at that. Oh, baby, guess what? Your trick is done. Good job, you guys. Beautiful. Okay, now let's go back to that pumpkin. All right, what I'm going to have you guys do next is we're going to bring a few highlights into that pumpkin. And what I like to do is I like to grab a little bit of yellow, okay? Now for me, and I was just telling my last class this, in the fall, I don't like to use a lemony yellow. I just don't. I don't think it fits, you know, but if you want to use a lemony yellow, you go for it. What I always do in the fall is I take my yellow and I'll grab just a tiny bit of orange and I'll mix that in with the yellow and just tone it down and make it more of a harvesty yellow, okay? Just make it a little bit more, less lemony and more like a harvesty yellow. And that always seems to make, you know, feel right for me in the fall, okay? And then what I do is I grab a little bit of white just a tiny scoop of white, and I mix that in with the harvesty yellow, okay? Just tone it down just a little. That way it is just feels more like fall. All right, and let me show you what that little bugger looks like. Oh, yeah. Got a little more white. Okay, there we go. I want a little more orange. And there, all right. Now there is my harvesty yellow. See that? Now let me show you the regular yellow. So you've got regular yellow, which is very lemony, but I like to tone it down. You can't really tell because I'm on my computer tonight, so you don't have the best quality. But I like to tone it down and make it a little harvesty. And that's just me. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's your world, okay? And if you don't want to do that, don't do that. It's all right. It's all right. It's up to you. It's your world, okay? Beautiful. All right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off that brush, all right? And I'm not thinking, okay? That's what I told my class last time. No thinking when we bring in highlights, all right? So, we're going to go into that pumpkin, grab some of that harvesty yellow. All right, watch this. Okay, see that? All I did was I took some of that yellow and we're just highlighting the top. Look at that. Highlighting the top of that pumpkin. Look at that. Okay, we're going to do the same in the center. See that? Add a little over here, zoom, a little bit in the top, look at that. And you're just going to not think and just add a tiny bit in there, look at that. Okay, that's the top of the pumpkin, that's the part of the pumpkin that gets the most light, all right? Then what I'm going to have you do, once that yellow is in there, you are going to take that brush, you're going to take that same medium brush, Grab a tiny bit of white on it, okay, nice and flat. And look at this. We're just going to add some of that right on top. Boom. Okay, right on top of that yellow. Not on top of the yellow, but in addition to the yellow. See that? Grab a little bit of white. Pull some of that white in there. Boom. Okay, get that light popping on the top of that pumpkin. See that? Yeah, baby. 
Now I'm gonna punk his highlighted, okay? Now normally what we would do is we'd bring some brown underneath and we can do that, okay? You can take a little brown, but because that pumpkin, the bottom of it is sitting in that truck bed, nah, you know, you don't have to do this step. But I, you know, I will, okay? So there we go. We'll just bring a little bit of that deep brown in the bottom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that would be the opposite of highlighting. That would be the part of the pumpkin that is just dark on the underside. Yeah, see that? Oh, yeah, so I see what you're doing, Nicole. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little orange, just pull up that brown just a little bit. I don't want it too dark. And boom. Okay, so there you go. Now that pumpkin in the back is highlighted. And what we're going to do to it next is we're going to bring back those little crease lines in the pumpkin. Okay, so grab some brown on your brush. We're using our small Hummer detail brush. Okay, and you guys are going to come in and just make these little thin brown lines, bring them back, okay? Let's bring those little lines right back in that pumpkin. Ooh, look at that. See that? I'm just gently going over, just putting a thin line right over those red lines that I had in there before. See that? That's why I told you guys, I was like, oh, make sure you remember where those lines Boom, like that, okay, bring it around a little bit so I get it around the outer edge, and here we go. Let's bring another one around the side. All right, nice thin brown lines. We're not really that stressed about it. We're just like, oh, okay. That just gives our pumpkin a little more definition. All right, come back here, add a few around this part. Boom, there. He is Mr. Pumpkin. Oh, he's looking good. Look at that, that's a prize pumpkin, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> now, what you guys are gonna do next is you're gonna come in on top of that pumpkin and you're just gonna make a little stem, okay? Here we go. And all I'm doing is I am just filling in. I call it the heart of the pumpkin. Okay, I'm just filling that in with brown right in the center. And then I'm gonna bring that stem up like this. Woo, look at that. Okay, can you see that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And here comes the fun part. Now you can take this stem, you can reach out a little bit if you'd like to. Okay, don't get too fancy with it because it's just a little pumpkin, okay? And what we're gonna do is, if you would like, you're gonna put in some of those little curly veins or those curly uh, vines, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna take this, watch this, start right here, woo! Okay, there's one vine. Oh, it's vinylicious, right? Woo I think that's all I'm gonna add because I kind of like that, okay? Just add, you know, but you do you. If you wanna put another one the other way, you can. But to me, that feels right. That feels good. It's, it's swinging in the wind on that prize pumpkin, okay? And take your time on your curly cues. You're just basically gonna go, I mean, for me, I don't even think. I just kind of meow, right? And I'll trace it up. Boom, bada boom, jumba do, and bah. There, make all those noises because it'll come out the hell if you do. Okay, see that vine flowing in the wind? I love it, I love it. Okay, now, the last thing that you're gonna do on your pumpkin is you can grab a little bit, take that little brush, okay? Double dip it, 
put one side of it yellow and the other side add some white. So you've got yellow and white. And what I'm going to have you do is just trace that vine so you can get a little bit of a highlight on that vine. Okay? And maybe a little bit of a highlight on that stem too. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. Add a little more white there. And try them. <laughs> Trying hard. Yeah. All right. There we go. See that? So just add a little bit of a highlight on your vine and on your stem. And once you do that, your pumpkin is done, baby. Woo, I like that done pumpkin. Time to make yourself some pumpkin pie with that prize winner. Huh? Good job, you guys. Okay, so you incredible people have carved out the skeleton in your tree. You have done your truck. Let me see if there's anything else we're missing. You've got your pumpkin done. Now the last thing, I am just, whoop, here we go. See, this is where you gotta be careful because if you add too much water, you can get the drips. Let me fix that. And that's exactly what just happened to me. So here we go. Can't have you guys seeing the dripping mess, right? No one cares. Okay, and what I was doing was I was in the process of just putting a little bit more black around the headlight. But it dripped on me. That's all right. But that's an easy fix. Okay. There's that. And grab a little white. Do like that for this. Okay. Now, all right, all right. I put a little design in there because that's what I do. But anyways, okay. So last thing that we are going to do on this painting is we are going to bring in some leaves. Okay. And. You can do one of two things. You guys can do just um, orange and red leaves, or if you would like, you can add in orange, red, and those harvesty yellow leaves too, okay? Which, that's up to you, it's your world. All right, so in order to add those leaves, what I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to take your medium brush, all right? Now, we are going to turn this brush into a gentle woodpecker. Yes, I said woodpecker, okay? Right? Well, that's how we're going to make those leaves, okay? But if you've never done this before, what I want you to do is take like a little red on your brush, okay? Take a little red. And practice on your paint plate, right? Watch this. Boop, boop, boop. So you know what shape your leaves are going to be, okay? And you know how much pressure to use on that brush. You don't want to go wacky, 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 and make these big old leaves. doesn't work, okay? So here we go. I am going to take a little bit of red on my brush. I'm going to start off with that red. And in completely random places, here we go. And I'm turning my brush. Look at this. Boop, 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 boop. Look at that. Going. Look at, oh, yes. All right. Am I thinking? No. I am just randomly packing in some of those beautiful red leaves. Not too many because of the fact that I got to bring in two more colors, right? And I don't want my leaves to be leave alicious. I don't want my tree to be leave alicious. So there we go. That yeah, looks about like a good good amount right there. Beautiful. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this procession of leaves. Okay. 
this procession of leaves that goes across the top of my truck. See that? Beautiful. Here we go. Here comes my leaf procession, right? And I'm just going to randomly pack them in a pattern going right across the top of my truck. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. Ooh, I love a nice leaf procession. Maybe I'll add a few more in there. Okay, see that? And just random pecks. That's all you're going to do. All right. And now we're going to go underneath this tree, okay? And we're going to add some red leaf down there because those little buggers have fallen, aren't they? Oh, yes. Look at this. Okay, they went, went under the truck. They're under there. Look at that. Okay, got a few more. Oop, 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 oop. Okay, make those noises. They'll come out better, I promise. All right. <laughs> Add some red ones down here. Oh, yes, gosh. Because, you know, we're spinning our tires on our antique truck. And what that's doing is it's spinning all the leaves off, right? Spinner. Okay. Beautiful. Now, that's my first color. Now, if you guys are just going to use red and orange, what I would tell you to do is add more of these red leaves. Okay, but because I'm using three colors, I'm going to add just about that much. All right, and you can always add more later if you decide to. Okay, all right, so there's my red ones. All right, now I'm going to wash off my brush, wash off that medium brush just like that. All right, wash her off nice and good, just like that. Okay, spread her out, and here comes my orange leaf. Same idea. Okay, I got them on the tip of that brush, and here they come. Here comes me orange ones. Ooh, look at that. And when I make leaves, what I like to do is I like to turn my brush this way. I like to spread it all out so it's ushy and gushy. Not the best idea for the brush, but I like to have those different shapes and sizes, okay? And I just basically turn my brush as I'm doing this, okay? Just like that. Bam. I know we've hit that 9 o'clock mark, and some of you guys have to work in the morning, okay? So don't worry. This will be, this is a actual free show. Yeah, don't have to worry about me making you pay for the replay. It's going to be right on my Facebook page, okay? All you got to do is go on there and enjoy it. Finish up tomorrow night if you need to. And then what I'll do in a few days is move it to my YouTube channel, which is Artful Nights Maine. I got about 45 to 50 tutorials on there that you guys can do. Okay, now I'm bringing in these orange leaves in the procession. Look at that. All right, now maybe you want it to be early in the fall, so maybe your tree has more leaves on it. That's all right. <laughs> no worries. Okay, it's your world, man. You just do you. Okay, see that? I'm going to add just about that many, and then I'm going to come down here. Oh, maybe I'll add a few fallen. Why? Just because I want to. All right, and come down underneath. Bring in those orange leaves, right? Turning that brush, giving it just a gentle, nice peck. Oh, you're a good pecker at home. I know you are. Right? Yes, sir. And you're tucking to this tree thing. This is a cute painting. Oh, my goodness, you guys. You picked a good one. Okay, see that? Oh, there we go. And that, for me, is enough. Okay, maybe for you it isn't, and that's okay, you guys. All right, you do as many or as few as makes your heart happy. Now, I'm gonna wash off my brush again, add some of that harvesty yellow on it. Okay, make sure it's all blinky, all frayed out, just like this. Oh, there we go. And here comes my yellow, my harvesty yellow leaves. Okay, and try to add these in the in betweenies. I mean, you can have leaves cross each other, and it's no big deal. But 
you may have some spots on the in-betweens, okay, that you want to add these yellow leaves to. Okay, here we go. Oh, here comes the leaf procession. Ooh, look. Ooh, do -ki -do -ki -do -do. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful, right? Because that little wind flying over that antique truck. I love it. Okay, add some down here. Again, you can add them falling if you want to. Look for those in-betweenies, those spots that don't have any leaves in them. Okay, yeah, and then he's spinning his tires, Farmer Joe, because he's got that big old pumpkin in the back, right? And he's got a slick roadway. So Farmer Joe's spinning his tires, and all these leaves are flying up in the back. It's like, oh, I gotta get my punk in there fast. It's a winner to the fair. I don't know. That's just what I imagine is happening. Ah, Farmer Joe. Good job, Bubba. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and there you go, you guys. Once you get those leaves in there, oh my goodness, oh my soul, your masterpiece is complete. Look at that. We did it! There we go! <laughs> okay, grab your little brush, add your famous artist signature in the lower left or right hand corner. Same artist signature you're going to use for the rest of your life. And when you guys are famous and you got these in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, that's how they're going to identify you, right? <laughs> there we go. And there is our final, final truck. All right, all right. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Again, make sure you send me a copy of your picture. Make sure you like Artful Nights Maine so you can catch all these shows, uh, these Facebook Lives, and have a fabulous week. I love you guys. 